Our city manager Juan Guerra says all the time that City Hall is on call for our residents. We are on call all the time, 24 hours a day, because we definitely work for you. And we are here to make sure that we are available to tell you exactly what's going on in the city. And, um, and then after we have these presentations, we've chosen a few directors to speak tonight. We'll keep doing these so you can hear from different departments. But after we've done our presentations tonight, um, we want you to feel really comfortable and, and at ease asking some questions. So we'll just all go towards the back. There's some drinks back there. We have some raffles going on. And you can ask any of the directors that are presenting tonight or the mayor or anything after the presentations. We'll go to the back. And that way you can have some, some question and answer time and make sure that whatever you need addressed is addressed. OK? So we're going to get started tonight with our mayor, Richard Molina, who is going to talk to us tonight about um, you know, the fastest growing city in the valley, that's Edinburgh, Mayor. Good evening. I want to thank uh, everybody for showing up and being here today. Um, yesterday we had a city council meeting and uh, there was a lot of items that we covered. There's people that like to watch us on Facebook. Uh, there's people that like to get together and watch us on TV. Believe it or not, people still watch uh, Time Warner. So that's unbelievable. So I do want to uh, cover a couple of topics here with you all about the growth of the city. Now understand that um, I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna show you the number of people that really participate. It's hard to get people to volunteer time. The position of mayor and city council is a voluntary position. So a lot of people don't understand that. They think that we go out and that we make the big bucks and they don't really, they, they, people tell me, I can't believe you take bullets for free. And that's exactly what we do, we take bullets for free. So. I, I put term limits. I don't think uh, the media did a good enough job covering the fact that we're the only city in the entire Rio Grande Valley that has term limits. No more career politicians. I ran on that, and that's something that we need to do some research on because the other cities haven't really done their research on doing that. So just like the president of the United States, the same thing applies for mayor and councilman. You can't m run more than two four-year terms. So understand that that's very, very good. So those of you that want to get involved and you want to run for mayor or council in the future, I encourage you to get involved in that if you want to serve at the highest capacity. So I always tell people that want to run, go ahead and run. It's something that, that I believe if you have it in your veins and you believe that it's something that you had on your wish list or your bucket list like I did, then get involved in the city and find out what's going on. You know, I believe if we go out and we put our energy into this city, we're going to make it a better city. If we go out and complain about everything, well, that's, a, that's exactly what we're going to attract. It's called the laws of attraction. Whatever you think about, you get. And I honestly believe that what happens with the city, this is the fastest growing city, not because I'm the mayor, just because we have full momentum, where we stand geographically. I think the fact that we don't rely on the Mexican consumer as much as McAllen really elevates us to the next level. Well, what am I talking about? Go to La Plaza Mall. When all of these things are happening, over at the bridge and, and there you know there's this fighting in washington dc that goes on with border security you can see the numbers start to drop in the sales tax in mccallum because they depend largely on the mexican consumer and you just look at the license plates walk around the parking lot you'll see a lot of people predominantly speak spanish when you go into la plaza mall when you go into the best buys over in the south uh the southern parts of mccallum so when all these things happen at the border it it, it affects their sales tax here in Edinburgh is a little bit different. The people that shop at our Burlington, our J.C. Penney, that go to our Texas Roadhouse, those are people that usually live around the city of Edinburgh. So that's special because whatever happens on the border sometimes, we really don't feel uh, everything that happens. So I want to cover some, some statistics here. Uh, this is just something that we're doing for the public. Uh, a lot of people that are here, Juan gets the directors together, and they're salary employees. So. So people say, well, you know, you're paying overtime this. We're just trying to get the message across and try to be as transparent as possible. So we have different guest speakers. I do want to recognize one of our council members that's here, Mr. Gilbert Enriquez in the back. Thank you for being here. And like I said, we're on volunteer time. So we're here on our own free time to share what we can and just to make this a better city because that is our ultimate goal. And believe me, I hear it all, how sometimes McAllen has this, and FAR has that, and, and Mission got this. We are trying to compete the best that we possibly can with other cities. Believe me, we do not lose for lack of effort, and I'll tell you this, for those of you that participated in the All-America City, we were out there, we practiced 
every single day for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it came down to the judges, and unfortunately, we were picked as a top 20 finalist, but we didn't get the actual prize. But for, I think that brought us closer together, more unified. We actually saw that it, everybody wanted it. It was passionate, it was like a football team going out in a pepper rally, but we were really proud of our city, and we were really proud to show them exactly what we were doing. Our newest census estimates show Edinburgh's growth of 9.3%. So that shows you added 8,400 new residents. So that puts us, mas o menos, right under the 100,000 mark. Now remember, that was over a year ago, so I honestly believe we're over the 100,000 <coughs> benchmark. And that, I just wanna share this with you because people, this is hard to fathom. But where we lead the way, we lead the way in construction permits having to do with residential. Now we're hoping that we get that residential going and with that we get commercial because the rooftops are supposed to push commercial. Believe me, we've been fighting for the Olive Gardens. We've been fighting for the Longhorn Steakhouse, for the Red Lobsters, we talked to those people. They wanna see more rooftops and that's exactly what we're trying to get. We've been fighting for a bowling alley, some type of place like a Dave and Buster's. That one slipped through our fingers when I was a councilman. Uh, there's also main events. We're looking at getting these places, so I don't want people to think, as far as from a business aspect, if you go to the, I, I eat at the, um, it's unfortunate, but I eat sometimes at the uh, Olive Garden on North 10th. And when you walk in there, it's 50% of the people in there are from Edinburgh. It's crazy, but because of where they're located, they don't, they, they say, well, we're too close. We don't have to put another one up because we get all your business anyways. So we're probably gonna have to push more to the north or more to the east. So I wanna talk about other cities and what they're doing so you can see how blessed we are uh, to have the city that we're in today. McAllen, big bad McAllen, that's always been our big brother. I know when I worked for Edinburgh PD for 11 years, guys would leave the police force to go work in McAllen. They were building up as a stepping stone and then eventually they'd go get a federal job. Now you don't see that anymore because our police department is one of the highest paid in the whole rural Grandy Valley. So it doesn't do them any good to get seniority and go work over there. And the same thing with most of our positions is that we're doing well when it comes to competing in those markets with a salary now. Now we're not number one, I'm not going there, but we're trying to compete the best that we can. So if you look at McAllen, 737 people added in the same time where we had 8,400. Brownsville, our largest city in the entire Rio Grande Valley, it's not McAllen, but it's in another county. They hit 100 people. Uh, 403 was Mission. Now Mission is pretty competitive with us when it comes to population, and then FAR was 50. So I think, Juan, you were one of those 50 when you lived there. <laughs> so you also have Harlingen at 50. So you guys can kind of see the growth of what's happening here. Our sales tax disbursements. May of 2019, we had over 2.3 million in disbursements. That is a growth of 7% uh, versus the same period. So there's more sales tax coming. Now, believe it or not, there's two places where I do buy my suits. One of them is JC Penney, and the other one is Burlington Coat Factory. So those are side by side. When I go in there, I look at that. There's people spending money right here on Trenton. So there's something good is happening here, and I'm telling you that because I see it. I go in there and, I, and I've actually gone door to door during the daytime, and I've met with everybody that lives, that actually rents from First Hartford, which is a property right on Trenton, and they put some of their, their uh, places right on the top. Let me give you an example. Pyology, right down the street, is number one in sales in all the Pyology network. So they have one in San Antonio. That one does more here on Trenton. It's hard to believe, but really their sales is up. Another one I want to talk about is Wingstop. I mean, there's a uh, Wing Barn, I'm sorry, because I get them confused. Wing Barn is right off the expressway in Trenton. That one is number one in sales from all its stores. Uh, the Starbucks is number three in all of the Rio Grande Valley, so in sales. Of course, McAllen, the one on 10th, does number one. And then there's another one in McAllen that does number two, and then we're number three. Uh, another one I want to talk about that does pretty well is our academy. Our academy is number two in sales. There's another one, uh, the one in McAllen off of the expressway, the new one that they build is number one, we're number two. So I kind of talked to the manager, what do we got to do to become number one, at least for one month? So those are things that we're looking at to try to encourage, promoting, billboard signs, whatever it is that we can do. 
Uh, you could see some of the other cities and what they're doing there. And of course, if you want to do your own research, don't take it at face value from me. If you don't want to, you can go to your Texas Comptroller's office and you can do your own research. That's public information. So we're going to go to. Sorry, 25%. I forgot to give you the new numbers that just came out. 25% gross in Edinburgh this month sales tax. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You have your sales tax uh, disbursements. So you can see here, these are the numbers that we want to show you. We're booming at 12.35%. And like Ruben said, uh, the things are, are doing very good here. We're on the up and up. Uh, say, and I, and I, I talk to people when they say, well, I'm going to move to Mission, or I just bought a house in FAR, and I bought a house here. Because one of the things we do uh, as marketers for our city, because I believe we're all marketers for our city, is we want to promote people to move to the city, and we want to pr promote people to spend money in the city. So that's very encouraging when you tell people, when you show these numbers, or their small business is doing really slow, you ask them if they're in Westlaco or Donna or Mission, and they say, well, you know, we're not doing too well. I said, well, you need to put yourself in a position where the growth is going, and, and the growth is happening here in Edinburgh. So uh, we do have uh, some other things that we're going to touch up on. Like I said, we're going to go in the back and do a question and answer here in just a bit, but I just want to kind of flow and that we don't get people like stuck in the seat. But without further ado, I'll bring up Ms. Zayas. Thank you. Okay, our city manager is up next, Mr. Juan Guerra. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be the city manager for the city of Edinburgh. Uh, Edinburgh is one of the shining stars of the Rio Grande Valley, and to be the city manager, it's, it's, it's an honor. It's, it's humbling, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it's humbling mainly because I understand my role. My role as city manager is to utilize the resources that the mayor and city council provide us to help roughly 100,000 residents have good public safety and a great quality of life. And it doesn't happen by myself. It doesn't matter how intelligent or experienced I think I am. There's nothing that I do by myself. I can't do it by myself. I do it with the team. And um, with the team that we have here in Edinburgh, uh, what the mayor stated is correct. We are the fastest growing city in the Rio Grande Valley. And in my opinion, it's because of the policies that the mayor and council have enacted and the work that our employees have produced for our residents. Keep in mind, we're human, so no one's perfect, but ultimately we provide a good product, good uh, public safety, and good quality of life to those residents. Uh, so with that, I want to discuss quickly local government management. Uh, the main items is transparency and public outreach. Once again, we work for the residents. As a team, we work for the roughly 100,000 people that live inside the city of Edinburgh. Um, uh, this is a brief 10-minute presentation. Keep in mind, there's a question and answer session after we're all done presenting, so that's why it's only 10 minutes, but there's a lot more to discuss. Uh, the issue to discuss is the city's core value, managing the over 1,000 employees. I can't do it alone, so how do we do it? And we'll dis discuss that briefly. Uh, strategic planning, uh, how, do, how do we become even better today, uh, tomorrow than we are today? Uh, budget and taxes is a new budget year coming up, and uh, tax rates and, and the budget it needs to be quickly discussed. Uh, transparency and public outreach efforts, we'll quickly discuss that. And then public engagement, which is important because once again, uh, we work for the public as smart as I think my staff is and myself. Uh, ultimately, uh, we need the public's input to make sure we give them good public safety and a good quality of life. City's core values is the uh, committed set of beliefs that guides uh, actions uh, unites its employees and defines its brand. And this is identified through the PRISM, uh, Leadership Principles and Traits. It's on the city's website. Uh, it's, once again, we're human, so we're all going to make mistakes. But this is a guide, a guideline of how every employee is expected to uh, act uh, with the PRISM. It's the professionalism and transparency. It's the respect, integrity, ethics, <coughs> synergy, and cross-training and the maximization of operational performance. Uh, with that, there's 11 leadership principles, and once again, this is a guideline of how we're, as, we as employees are supposed to act, um, and we promote this. If you notice uh, the, the circular uh, symbol, the circular logo, logo, you'll be seeing it throughout the community, and we do that on purpose. Although this is an internal item that we tell employees to act in, in this fashion, we promote it so that the residents hold us accountable as much as possible to the leadership traits and principles. 
So um, once again, this is on the city's website. If you would like more details, we can discuss that a little bit in the Q&A. But it's part of managing an over 1,000 employee uh, operation. Um, we all got to be in line, moving in the same direction, understanding that we're public servants, working for the public, and, and make sure that we do it within, within these uh, leadership principles and traits. Next, the Comprehensive Master Plan, it's a long-term long strategic planning. Now, I'm bringing this up here today because we are currently in the process of updating this master plan. With the leadership of the mayor and city council, uh, we, part, we are partnering up with Texas A&M Teaks. Uh, they are providing the, um, uh, the framework for updating the, the master plan. Now, what is a comprehensive master plan? Uh, it's developed by city council administration and the public and community input. It's a long-term uh, strategic plan. It tells us what we're going to be doing for the next 10 years, uh, where we want to be as a community in the next 10 years. Um, the highlight here is, we, is I want to promote how to get involved. And Texas A&M, uh, with uh, the city of Edinburgh leadership, uh, will be having pub community uh, town halls. Um, it's not a, a pol political event. It's more for a comprehensive uh, uh, master plan purposes. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to go to different segments of the community uh, on the dates of October 2nd, October 3rd, October 16th, and October 30th. And it's, it's going to be on the northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest uh, uh, corridor of this community because there's people in certain areas that go, don't go to other areas. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to go out to the public um, and ask them for their input. Where would you like the city of Edinburgh to go in the next 10 years? Uh, once again, it uh, doesn't matter how intelligent we think we are, we don't know it all. We need the community's input. And this is the format in which we're going to go out and try and get that information. Because once we get all this information, tons of data will be analyzed. And then by the, the time of around April of 2020, uh, Texas A&M will have formulated the city's comprehensive master plan. And we'll have an idea as based on the, the, the council mayor and council direct, uh, directives, the community's input, and the staff's recommendations of where this community is going to go in the next 10 years. So out of very anything, I'd, I'd like for you all to please pay attention to that and join us and participate in the growth of your community. All right, proposed budget. Uh, the end of September is the end of the fiscal year. Uh, as was highlighted by the mayor, we are fiscally strong. We are fiscally healthy. All of our, our contingency accounts, which is our, our emergency reserves, they're 100% funded. There's nothing wrong fiscally with this community. So what we're doing now is we, we're identifying a new budget year. And the new budget year citywide, uh, it's a $180 million budget. It's a big budget. We're, we're a big community, 100,000 people. Uh, with that comes the tax rate. Without a tax rate, you get no budget. So the tax rate's important. If you notice, the last uh, five years is 63.5 cents uh, per hundred dollar valuation is the tax rate. This year, 2019, is 68.5. What's well, a five cent difference? If you all remember, in November of 2018, uh, there was two bond proposals that was presented to the community, and the community overwhelmingly voted 70% uh, to 30 to raise their taxes, in essence, because we communicated, this bond is going to cost five cents on your tax rate. Do you want it? Yes or no? And then we took a step back, didn't recommend anything, allowed the community to voice their opinion, and they voiced it very strongly. They are willing to pay five cents in their taxes so long as we fix the infrastructure, mainly the drainage, which we're currently in the process of doing. So uh, that's one thing you're identifying there. 63.5 cents is going to go to 68.5 cents if the mayor and council vote on it, uh, based on what the public has asked the council to do. Um, so that should be presented uh, shortly. <coughs> All right, transparency and public outreach. Uh, this is always a big thing for every community because um, transparency, it's all in how you define it, right? Um, some people want transparency to the minutiae, minute details. Some people want transparency big picture, just let me know about what's going on and to each their own. But ultimately what we try to do as a uh, local government is make sure we're transparent. Uh, keep in mind, we comply with the state law requirement of public information requests. So if we're transparent and you would like more transparency, Simply file a public information request. Uh, we comply with the law within 10 days, you should get an answer. Uh, there's nothing this uh, organization hides that, uh, as far as I'm aware. So 
So with that transparency, uh, we updated the city's website. Uh, our website was antiquated. Uh, we updated, we have a brand new website. Uh, as of January of 2019, we have 1.2, over 1.2 million hits, which means um, people going to our web pages and ident identifying information they're wanting to get, and they, they, ch they, they uh, drill down on that. So the number one transparency tool for any community is, is its website. So how do we make sure that in this upcoming year we are as transparent or more? Well, there's a new website content uh, writer that is budgeted. IT currently manages the uh, website. Uh, IT has, has communicated their, their concern to us that there's too much information for them to handle. They need a, a permanent person to handle uh, updating the content on that website. So because we care about transparency, we're going to provide, at least I'm recommending the city manager uh, to the mayor and council to provide me with this position uh, to make sure that we are transparent at all times based on the number one transparency tool for any community, which is the website. All right, social media, uh, Facebook, uh, record number of users. Uh, that's where, if you want quick and up-to-date information about what's happening um, in the community, uh, the reality, and I'm not promoting Facebook, you know, but that's the main tool to get up-to-date information. If there's a hurricane, emergency management type thing. We post all the notices on Facebook right away. Now, want to uh, promote the fact that the Facebook likes in this community has really grown in the last year, year and a half. Uh, we're at up to 24,000 likes, and out of the 24,000 people, 11,000 of those uh, people are from the city of Edinburgh. So uh, we have record number of uh, people on the city's Facebook pages, and we would like more. So if anything, um, uh, please tell your friends and family to uh, like the Facebook page for the city of Edinburgh, because if you want quick and, and, and up-to-date information, uh, that's the first venue we put it on. State controller requirements. The state comptroller has requirements for fiscal transparency. Uh, they've had it for, 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 I don't know, I want to say maybe 10 years now. And for whatever reason, this city has not uh, participated in that transparency thing. Um, coming in, I identified uh, the issues at the finance department. I understand why we don't have fiscal transparency uh, in the city's history. But that's something that, uh, that the mayor and city council have directed me to, to try to look into and fix. And that's something that we're currently doing. It starts with, number one, having uh, up-to-date information uh, through our, our finance software. We're in the process of uh, finishing up to update our antiquated uh, fiscal uh, software. We had two softwares. We're going to merge it into one. It's going to be update. We'll be able to pull reports. Because to be fiscally transparent, according to the state comptroller, you have to post tons of stuff on the city's uh, Facebook uh, page in the finance department. Right now, uh, we're probably 50% there. Uh, by 2020, uh, early 2020, we should be 100% there. We should be able to comply. So this is the first time in Edinburgh's history that we're going to do something like this. And once again, the goal is to make sure that we're transparent. All right. Uh, public outreach. Once again, in order for us to continue doing what we think is right uh, when it comes to programs and services, we have to uh, get information from the public. Once again, we work for the public and we don't know it all. So these events are important. That's why you see it promoted in many venues. Uh, what we have is, uh, is coffee with the mayor and city hall on call during city festivals as well as uh, town hall meetings. Uh, there are outreach efforts for residents to meet with the mayor, uh, city council, uh, city administration, identify issues, and provide recommendations. Um, a lot of times people do it solely on, on, on Facebook. Well, that's not really the, the best venue. The best venue is here in person or uh, uh, call to make an appointment to meet with us and, and discuss things. Because normally when, when you text, uh, whether through the phone or on Facebook, you lose context. You, lo you lose the meaning, you lo lose the emphasis when you talk to someone. You just get a, a quick sentence and, and that you lose the message sometimes doing that. So what we always recommend is come to these outreach events, talk to us, or set up an appointment to meet with us in person. Because once again, we don't know it all. We would like the community's help as we continue to provide the excellent service that I think we do. All right, and then city council and ad advisory meetings. Um, we are complying with the state uh, law that requires public comments at every single uh, meeting. Uh, we are doing that uh, based on the recommendations or requirements given to us by the city attorney and the mayor and council are on board with this. Uh, at every meeting that we have, which is public, uh, there's public comments before that. So if there's any time, whether good or bad, 
that, uh, that we're doing, let us know. Uh, there's, there's venues for, for everything. All right, now resident participation in solving problems. We currently have the C Click Fix app. Well, we're rebranding it. We're trying to uh, give it a fresh face. We're, we're going to try. We're going to start and promote it again. It's going to be called Engage Edinburgh. This is a free app where uh, residents and visitors can can uh, get service calls uh, identified that need to be fixed. Uh, they'll, they'll do work. They can create work orders, and it's mainly identify the potholes, the weedy lots, uh, traffic signals that are out, lights that are out. Uh, things like that. Uh, this should be available October 1st. Uh, it, it all depends, of course, on how fast Apple and, uh, and, and the Android platforms updates their service, but w we are uh, going to uh, re re uh, relaunch this app. Once again, this is for the resident participation in solving problems. Sometimes residents feel frustrated in, in trash in certain areas. Uh, or potholes in certain streets. Um, yes, we have a thousand employees, but this is a big city, right? So we don't see 100% of the things. So what we do ask is, our, is the public, hey, let us know. Um, uh, we will try to fix just about everything that we can. Uh, once again, we work for the public. And uh, we are human, so there, is an, uh, there are times where employees will make mistakes, but ultimately <coughs> we want to make sure we fix it. We provide good public safety for our residents as well as good quality of life and public participation is key. Okay, so uh, this is just the big picture topics that hopefully will generate some questions and answers after the presentations. Um, uh, with that, I guess I'll hold off on questions until the end of the presentation. So Ms. Carey, at this point, uh, thank you guys very much for your time. Okay. Um, here we go. So my presentation is actually next. It's staying connected with our residents. I'm the Communications and Media Director for the City of Edinburgh. Um, and this role, from when I even started here to now, has changed so much because of the way um, society is changing and the way we get our information now. Um, I think you see this through a lot of, of different mediums. Um, I know the news business, they're heavy now into website instead of a newscast because no one's gonna wait for the newscast anymore. People want information immediately and um, so even in our city, we're doing as best we can to provide that to our residents. So here's our mission statement. The communications and media department dedicated to consistently keeping residents of Edinburgh informed about the services provided to them, such as infrastructure projects, legislation, economic stability of the city, health, business, events, programs, and all decisions made by the city council. So uh, we do have um, a public access channel. It used to be ECN 12, when Spectrum took over, that became Spectrum Channel 1300, where we have programming all day long. You can see all the meetings there, whether it's the city council meetings, the EDC meetings, the um, planning and zoning meetings. We have um, informational interviews with our directors about different programs that are going on. You can always watch there. Then if you go to the website as well, www cityofedinburgh.com and you click on watch ECN, we're called the Edinburgh Cable Network, you can see also live from your laptop or your device our council meetings or programming at any time. So I'm the director, I have my two uh, Anna here, Anna say hello so they know your face, that's Anna Avila back there, a reporter. Kenya Gomez is our communication specialist, Kenya's here too, where are you? Kenya, oh, right there, okay. And um, we have some great video journalists. If, if you do keep up with our, our Facebook uh, pages and, and our Instagram and Twitter, you see the finely produced videos that we have. And those are our photographers, um, Honadab, who we call Honabad, Honadab Alfaro, a video journalist, also Marco Martinez, video journalist, and Freddy Herrera, who creates he also is, is a photography wizard, but he creates all the beautiful graphics that you see. Um, he's our digital media administrator, and of course the administrative assistant, um, Martha Mena, who our, our department can't function without Martha. <laughs> okay, so in the past, there was um, very limited communication with residents, um, limited engagement on social channels, limited information that was available to residents. There was really a stifled production. I know when I first came into work here and I walked into that studio, there were three cameras sitting on the floor. Cameras are expensive. There were three cameras sitting on the floor and I asked the guys, why are they on the floor? They don't work anymore, it's end of life. They don't even make parts for those anymore. I said, so what are we using? 
oh, well, we use our field camera sometimes. We use a, we borrowed a camera from the EDC. We, all right, that is all going to change. Anything was outdated and non-functioning, we were going to change that. And so here we are today. So our social media following stronger than ever. And, and think about when you want information on something, what do you do? What do you do? You Google it, right? You Google it. You go to your phone. You check Facebook. You, um, or you use your laptop, right? It's all digital. That's, that's how we look for information now. Well, we have more than doubled our following on Facebook. When I came in, it was 10,420, but we revamped this department for our residents. We wanted our residents to always have access to everything that we were doing. And now we're right almost at 25, we're getting really close. Well, 25,000, a little over followers and almost 25,000 likes too. Uh, we're super active with Instagram as well and Twitter. And of course we have a YouTube channel as well where you can see all those um, videos that we produce. So we are growing on the daily. We have new likes every single day. I know if you look back there, I think it says, what does it say back there, Chief? 24,600 and what was it? And 70. So since we printed that yesterday to now, it's now 24,699. That was from yesterday to today. So people are tuning into these social media channels to get information about what's happening in their city. So it's really important. And, and some of our, our followers, or, or our, they're called fans, um, are also from surrounding cities, from Mission, from McAllen. Maybe they have relatives that live here, or maybe their son or daughter does, or granddaughter or grandson does, but they, they keep following what's happening in the city as well. So um, we are not just sharing information with you, we're answering your questions, we're listening to your concerns, we're letting you know about the important events, that come up in our city and we're taking your suggestions also we're sharing those suggestions with the council and management and all of our department directors and hopefully we are helping you get the help that you need and I'll give an example today um, today there was a, a resident who said that there was a dog that had died and was in the easement by his home and he tried to call PD and PD says well because he thought animal control did it and animal control says no you have to call sanitation and so they he was a little confused so he just went to Facebook and said who's gonna come get the dog right that's he that's all he wanted he wanted an answer he wanted some help he wanted to know who was going to help him uh, and so i said we're going to get you some help sir call their sanitation director passed along his number to the gentleman he called we picked it up problem solved we do that so many times a day residents really do reach out to us quite often through our social media and so we want to make sure that it's always available to you um, for help so in order to really serve you though, we had to change how our department functioned. And you want information, we found from you, that is interesting and meaningful and engaging, right? So here, in 2014, the communications department shared seven videos that year. That's just not how people communicated. In 2016, the communications department shared 65 videos with its residents. In 2017, 115 videos with residents. And in 2019, from August through today, through in September, we've already shared 72 videos this month. Do you see the difference? There's constant information, transparency in government, letting you know what's happening, letting you know what's happening in your city, answering the questions that you've been asking and explaining how things work here. So how can you stay connected with us? Well, we talked about our website, cityofedinburgh.com. Of course, our Edinburgh cable network, that's Spectrum, channel 1300, and all of our social media platforms. We are on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, which is the biggest platform in the world, and on YouTube as well. There we are. We are active and we are engaged and we have engagement driven platforms. This is what keeps us busy uh, because we interact with you. We don't just want to put information out there. Every week we rotate who's assigned to answer your questions that come in through Facebook. We answer them. We look at them. We answer them. We try to get you the help we need. We have to be engaged with you or it doesn't matter, does it? If we're not answering your questions, what's the point? So we sure thank you for your support um, of, our, of our social media and of our city. And remember in Edinburgh, something good is always happening here. How y'all doing? My name is uh, Cesar Torres and I'm the Chief of Police for the great city of Edinburgh. I'd like to thank the, uh, our mayor, uh, our city council, uh, our city manager and assistant city manager and all the directors for the city and of course our public. So we have a mission statement and a vision statement. Pretty much it's public safety, it's what it boils down to. It's about 
serving our community and being here for a community so that we can have a safer place to live. The uh, organizational structure within the Edinburgh Police Department, we have 161 commission officers, 61 on commission, and we just hired uh, uh, 12 more police officers. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big uh, organization uh, that's tasked with public safety. The divisions within the Edinburgh Police Department, as you can see, we have quite a bit. And all of them are very important. They all have equal responsibility. But one of the things, divisions, that's very important is the COPs as a community outreach policing because that's what we do. Reach out to our communities to make sure that they know that we're here for them and they can trust us and they can call us when something is going on. Five-year plan that I'm looking at is promoting training. Training is very important. Uh, keeping up with technology. Just today, I'm happy to announce that we're trying today uh, I haven't reported to the city manager yet because tomorrow we're trying it out today to get the kinks out. But uh, we're going into, we're, we got a free trial for a 911 high tech emergency system. What that is, Chief Snyder calls the police department and says there's a bank robbery. The dispatcher says, okay, stay on the line, uh, sending officers, uh, what's going on, uh, guy in black? That's what's going on today. With this new system, Chief calls Edinburgh PD and says, there's a bank robbery. We're going to say, just get your phone and accept what we just sent you. He clicks, accepts, now point your phone at the threat. He's pointing and everything is live. As it's happening, we can see it on our camera at the PD, and we're fixing to see it on our squad cars. Uh, that's coming next week. That's very important piece of equipment. Thank you, Mr. City Manager, for uh, bringing that. Uh, you're the one, that's your idea, so thank you. Uh, keeping up with criminal trends, where are the burglaries, where are the robberies, where is our crime threat? What is our threat? Where are we getting hit with burglaries? Coming here, I understand that there's, uh, in the area of Sugar Road, South Sugar Road, we're getting hit with burglary after burglary after burglary. What do we need to do? send undercover agents, send our skywatch towers, send extra patrols, and guess what? The second day we made three arrests. We haven't had a burglary since. That is what, keeping up with. <laughs> Networking with other agencies. I know everybody. I got friends everywhere. <laughs> Focus on public needs. What is a public need? Elderly communities, what do they need? They need love, they need attention. That's why I made it vital to go and, and play bingo, play chalupa, play cars, play cards, race wheelchair with the, with the elderly. The Boys and Girls Club, our veterans, spending time with our veterans, spending time with little kids, going to schools. That's what the public needs. That's what they, what they deserve. All year we see to protect and serve in our squad cars. So how do we protect? We write tickets and we make arrests, right? How do we serve? Nobody knows the answer. I got the answer. We're doing it right now. That's 21st century policing, which city manager is strong on that. <laughs> Promote public safety. Our vision, our mission, right? Make sure that, that you're out safe, your kids are out safe. The other day I went on patrol with one of the officers and there's two kids playing basketball and we just go by. And I tell the officer, did you see those kids? Yeah. Is there anything that we should be doing? I, I don't know. Go back. We go back, we get on, we start playing basketball for 30 minutes. Within 30 minutes, we have six, six residents that come out and they're like, is everything okay? We're playing with the kids. They loved it. We loved it. It's outreach. Very important. Reduce crime. Very big one. I came here with an F rating is not because our men and women of Edinburgh PD weren't doing their job. Awesome employees, they were doing their job. We just didn't have programs in place that we have today. Crime manual is a big one. Tells us where the crime is happening. Here we go. And that's what reducing crime is about, is programs in place, our Skywatch towers. We've ordered four towers and we're gonna place them strategically in certain areas so that if you're jogging, or out there with the family, something happens, you hit the call box, 911. It's important. You know, we're going into more towers, we're going into more equipment. There's a lot of programs in place to reduce crime. 
what's new obviously a lot of stuff that we have here forfeitures there's a big one right there forfeitures I work for the Mission Police Department and one of the drug busts I was involved in one of my very first was two million dollars in cash second was thirty thousand in cash that led to forty million dollars in cash I came to the DPS did the same I came to Edinburgh PD we are from January 7th that I've been here we're at a little over eight point five million dollars yes million dollars in cash why is that important that's important because that money is used for training and equipment the more equipment I can get from our cartels the less our citizens pay also in addition to that the training why is training important because the better trained we have our officers the less injuries the less work comp claims which are big 780,000 we spent, almost a million dollars last year. It's crazy. Better educate our officers so that we go to a house and a guy is acting crazy, we know how to talk to him and de-escalate the situation before we end up getting shot or end up shooting somebody or hurting someone. That's why it's important. These are some of the equipment, about $40,000. Coming here, I, I found out, hey, we don't have workout equipment reached out to the LESO, it's a government military program for law enforcement that gives us free equipment. We went and got it. Thank you, Chief Snyder, for helping us go get it. We've created a bike patrol, very important, National Night Out, they were out there. Police cars, instead of our, our retired cars, instead of dropping in the bone yard, why not park them at Walmart, at, at, at the schools, to uh, give an illusion that there's officers there when there's not? But you know what? That's very important. It's working every day. Here they go at schools. Six schools not protected by the Edinburgh School District PD, uh, Police Department. They're protected by Edinburgh PD. Here's our communication center. State of the art. State of the art. State of the art. Million dollar machine up there. MRAP. Sustains explosions. Explosives. Those of you that have been in the military, that's a very expensive piece of equipment. We use it for our raids, because when we come down the highway with that, we're telling the people, you break the law in Edinburgh, Texas, Edinburgh PD is coming for you. Our citizens will be safe one way or another. <laughs> Here are some of our events uh, that uh, we've been involved in. Boys and Girls Club, Mujeres Unidas, elderly. Uh, kids that have cancer down here, our elderly down here, everywhere. We are everywhere. We're all over the map. I love it. Edinburgh Community Programs, there they are. We have a lot of them. A lot of them, and we're out there. We're out there day in and day out. Because when I go out there and I play wheelchairs with our elderly and they start crying, it, it, it's just very touching. It's, it's great PR. We want them to know we care for you. We're here for you. Crime stats, there they are. 18.1 down and they're going to continue to come down because people we're engaging people we're engaging the community and our programs that we have in place there it is 2018 versus 2019 in blue versus red there are, there it is 18.1 percent and of course we have a lot of grants 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 8.5 million dollars wow so we want the community to know that we are here to fight crime, to make sure that our citizens, our mothers, our grandmothers, our kids are safe in this community. Thank you. Okay, Mr. J. Signs, our Planning and Zoning Director is next. He's gonna be talking to us about our construction hotspots and some upcoming projects. Uh, whose idea was to put me after the police chief, Carrie? <laughs> My God. Uh, okay, so we'll try it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Jesus Sainz. I'm your planning and zoning director with the city of Edinburgh. Uh, I want to thank the mayor, uh, city council, uh, and all of you for being here so we can talk about uh, some of these numbers. Hopefully, I don't bore you, put you to sleep. Uh, uh, at a glance, I want to just talk to you about our infrastructure project update, some of the drainage projects you've been seeing around town, some of the street projects you will be seeing, uh, and some of our building safety division statistics, uh, permit valuations, new single family residential, kind of giving and expounding a little bit on what the mayor was talking about earlier, new family residential projects, new commercial projects, and development hotspots within the city. So 
again, you've seen some of these around town. Uh, a northeast Doolittle, a mile 17 and a half project, that's completed. Uh, northeast side of town uh, on Coon, that project is completed. The east portion of Sprague, Edinburgh Old Town site, that project's completed. And the uh, south central project, Edinburgh Old Town site, 19 to 18, that project will be completed in December 2019. One of the things that the mayor and council stressed uh, was infrastructure. Uh, we had infrastructure that had been neglected for many years. And anybody will tell you that aside from the citizens, the lifeblood of the city is infrastructure. You know, you've all heard it, right? If you build it, they will come. Right, so if you build infrastructure, if you have water, sewer, paving, and drainage, as you'll see in a second with the numbers that we have here, you will attract business. You will attract developers. You will attract people to construct and develop here in the city of Edinburgh. So some future drainage projects, we're gonna be handling the drainage on the North uh, Edinburgh drainage project close to Edinburgh North High School area. We're all familiar with some of the flooding issues that have resulted from recent rains. Uh, Stadium Drive in Dawson near Cat Stadium, that's another area that desperately needs assistance and we're working on that project as well, along with some street reconstruction projects, uh, full reconstruction for Junior and for Alberta Street projects. Those are gonna be ongoing uh, and we should kick off before the new year. And just some images of, of some of the, the locations that we've had. Again, this is, as you pass through the city, you've seen some of these projects going, and they'll be completed this year, ladies and gentlemen. So that's fantastic. A lot of drainage alleviation for this area. Some pictures. The FEMA project on Stadium Drive, just some information. Uh, construction and permit valuations, right? In January to December of 2015, you can see 139 million uh, in construction projects. From January to December of 2016, $209 million worth of construction. From January to December of 2017, we've had in this city, or in that, that time frame, over $270 million worth of construction. Now in January, you'll see the number dip in a, a little bit, but we don't build an arena every year, right? We'd like to, I'm sure, uh, but we don't, right? And so from January to December of 2018, we have $194 million in construction, and from January to August of 2019, this year's not over yet, we have over $238 million worth of construction here in this city. Single, fam single family residential construction, in 2019 we had a total of 48, 478 new homes. Uh, in uh, 2017 we had 496 new homes. In 2018, 397, and we project having approximately 400 new homes here in the city of Edinburgh. Okay, why this is important, and one of the things the mayor was talking about was population. Uh, basically, according to the census, every single family residential home has about 3.3 individuals that live in that particular home. So in that short time frame, we had 5,884 potential new residents to this town, and that's just growing by leaps and bounds. And the same thing with apartment complexes as we move forward. In 2016, we had 1,021 new units. That's doors, right? 938 in 2017. 2018, we had 937, and in 2019, we had 850. So that's over 3,746 well, 3, new re, uh, single uh, multifamily dwelling units. And if we do that same calculation based on the census, that's approximately 12,360 new residents in the city of Edinburgh in just four years. Okay, so that'll tell you, why are we working on our infrastructure? Because it's so desperately needed because of how fast we are growing in this town, right? If you do the quick math, it's over 18,000 new re potential residents in just four years in this city, ladies and gentlemen. So that's commercial construction as well. We'll also take care of construction. Commercial, uh, 2016, we had 75 million. In 2017, 143 million. Uh, in 2018, 90 million, and uh, in 2019, to date, we have 185 million dollars worth of commercial construction in this town. It's booming here, here in Edinburgh. And some of those are some of the major projects we listed. Uh, obviously, the arena, HEB Park, a beautiful soccer complex there on Rolongoria, Hidalgo County Courthouse, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Idea Toros Academy, Region One, uh, New Star Industrial Area, Tropical Texas Behavioral Center addition as well. Those are some of the major projects that have come in. And uh, those are just some of the values for that. Walk-Ons Bistro, which I'm sure you all have had pleasure of eating at. Um, $1.8 million project. Taco Palenque, just opened up on University Drive. Uh, $1.1 million. The Hidalgo Courthouse, County Courthouse, $18 million in structural and underground work. 
the idea of Toros Academy, which I just mentioned, is a $13.5 million project. We're having a new Ed Payne dealership as well coming into town, and that's an $8 million project. So some of the hotspots that we've talked about, the Trenton Corridor, we've seen a lot of multifamily development, a lot of commercial development about that corridor. McCall between University Drive and Trenton Road. Uh, again, a lot of single family residential homes. There's a new subdivision that's coming in right across from Lake James, ladies and gentlemen, and that, I'll tell you now, we talked to the developer, all of those lots are already spoken for. There are gonna be over 70 homes. We're talking about $300,000, $400,000 price range in those homes, beautiful homes, and they're coming here to the city of Edinburgh. Again, based on infrastructure, uh, it's just amazing what's happening. West University Drive, 10th Avenue to McCall Road, again, that is uh, another high development corridor. And believe it or not, in some of the uh, uh, areas along Chapin and original Townsite, you've seen some of the multifamily units that are coming in there. It's because of this university and because of this medical school and because of the proper infrastructure that we're putting into this town. That's why we have these hotspots here. Something good is happening here in Edinburgh. It's not just a slogan. The mayor is right. It is happening. It's happening now, and we see it every day. Thank you so much for giving me time to speak to you about this. So you surely have been to one of the events here in Edinburgh, haven't you? How many events do we have now? 38, 38 events throughout the year. There's always something going on in our beautiful courtyard, and um, we have a team that works so hard on that, and so I want to introduce Mr. Magdiel Castle to tell us about the culture and recreation uh, highlights that are happening in our city. Good evening, everyone. My name is Magdiel Castle. I'm your cultural arts manager. Uh, we are a team of four, and we put on together 14 festivals. Uh, around here, you'll see these banners, the University Draft House Beer Fest, the uh, uh, Frida Fest, the uh, UFO Festival, uh, the Sartex International Film Festival, the Filipino Festival, Juneteenth, Jubilee, um, Diwali, and that's uh, just a few of the ones that we do. Um, what do we offer? Uh, we offer some art classes on top of festivals, um, dance instructions, live theater, fine arts exhibits. We have a community theater that we just started back in March. Here we have one of our members, Mr. Juan Guerra, not our city manager, somebody else. <laughs> I think he stepped out. Um, and uh, actually next week we have a, a, an acting workshop. Uh, this is just something that we offer to you so you can relax, because you live and work here, but what do you do to relax? This is what you do to relax. Uh, film, uh, dance, music, cultural presentations, and, uh, and we also rent the auditorium. So if you have questions on the auditorium, um, you, you come to the library. Uh, we have our Festival of International Books and Arts. That's uh, in conjunction with the university. We have authentic Korean and Chinese dragon dances. Uh, our UFO Festival, which is a fan favorite, attracting people from all over the US. Uh, we bring top-notch speakers from Ancient Aliens, Discovery Channel, the History Channel. Um, they're a little bit different than your normal celebrity, but they are celebrities in their own right. <laughs> Our Filipino festival, like I mentioned before, we work together with a community that lives here and works here and uh, plays here. Our Filipino community is growing with about 24,000 Filipinos calling the Rio Grande Valley their home. Um, we also embrace our uh, Juneteenth celebration. Uh, we have a historic uh, black cemetery and every year, this is the 26th or 26th annual uh, year that we do the celebration. Uh, this coming year, it's gonna be moving to the City Hall Courtyard, and it's gonna join the ranks of our uh, city's uh, large festivals. Our Frida Fest is a fan favorite. This started in 2014, when we noticed that our an uh, monthly art walk uh, needed a little bit more of a hump to it. So we added a, a Frida Fest, and it quickly morphed into a women's empowerment festival, uh, we attract, uh, next year we have uh, Cristina Kahlo, uh, Frida Kahlo's grandniece, and um, Santa Barraza, a uh, famous artist who's gonna be coming down and give a workshop and lead our women's empowerment panel. Our South Texas International Film Festival, we just had our fifth annual. We went from an emerging festival to an established film festival. We are a film friendly city, uh, thanks to our council as well and uh, trainings that we've been uh, given uh, we attract celebrities, it's a four day festival, and it's free movies for everyone. So if you're a movie lover, this is the perfect uh, festival for you. And it's not outdoors. <laughs> All the other ones are outdoors, and it's hot here. Uh, our Day of the Dead Festival, uh, this is one of our unique festivals. If you notice here, that's Aretha Franklin. And the Day of the Dead Festival is a Mexican-ish holiday. 
Uh, but because we celebrate and embrace our community um, with our Juneteenth uh, committee, we dedicated the altar uh, to Aretha Franklin and cross-promoted our cultural integrations. Diwali is our festival of lights. Uh, this year's taking place November 2nd um, for, uh, with the Indian community. Uh, there's going to be food, uh, food and entertainment uh, directly from India. So if it's a culture that you're looking for, you're going to find it in Edinburgh. Other cities like McCann, they may have the money, but they don't have the culture and attraction that we have. And that's something that we can provide to you. Uh, <laughs> this is this year's um, calendar. Next year's is going to be 38 festivals. Um, if you need direct information, you can just call City Hall to transfer to us and we'll be able to give you all the information that you need. Uh, thanks to our city manager for uh, streamlining all the uh, festivals. We will now be uh, overseeing and giving out information in one location so that you do not get transferred from one department to the other. Uh, we also handle several other projects. So aside from uh, exhibits, the theater, the dance, uh, the festivals, we are doing also the parade, the veterans parade, but this year, we are going to um, unveil our Boulevard of Heroes um, Boulevard, which is on Klausner, um, and each um, light uh, control box is going to have a mural uh, painted on there to honor our veterans, oh, I'm sorry, our fallen heroes. And um, they are, they're gonna be on every intersection between the courthouse and here, starting on our road with um, at Dusty and finishing in, at the courtyard with uh, Pedro Cano on Cano Street. So uh, I hope you can join us. Rain or shine, we did it last year and uh, cold and, and rain, and we're going to do it this year no matter what the weather is. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Directors are getting feisty now. All right, that is our presentation for this evening. We hope that we've um, given you some information that is useful to you. Um, we are going to have some tacos in the back if you'd like to stay and join us for dinner. And of course, all of the directors who presented are going to be back here too. And we are more than happy to answer any questions that you have for us. So thank you so much for being with us tonight.